Hey guys, welcome back. I'm um, working on the 64 power again. Now I am going to try and lift this grill assembly up by myself, slide it in here and put the bolts, at least these two top bolts in. So the only real problem I see having is I got to get these bottom of the fenders to kind of push outwards enough for me to get the other side in. So let me give it a shot and I'm just go real nice and gently with it because I don't want to scratch the paint. Luckily, if I hit any of this edge right here, it gets covered with a trim piece, but I'm hoping to not do that. So let's see what happens. So I'm going to shove one side in first as much as I can. I don't know how easily this is going to go. Well, not too bad. Actually, better than I thought. These bottom pans are completely shot. Those little pieces of sheet metal under there, they're kind of rusty. I didn't mess with them because there's big holes in them. I mean, like I said, there's only so much I can do with this right now. Okay. There we go. And there's really not a lot of adjustment on this. to get those started. I'm going to go find some hardware, some uh, bolts and stuff, but I guess I can get this one tightened first. I have a whole box of bolts and stuff here. Okay, so let me get some stuff together and then we'll come back and I'll get this bolted in. Gotta do some cleaning up on that silver and stuff. Probably just take some uh, polish and try to clean the grill up a little bit. Um, so, you know, what I'm gonna do off camera, I think it's just gonna be easier. I'm just gonna throw some of these bolts in and then I'll come back and we'll work on getting the trim pieces and stuff on. Cause obviously you saw me get it in place. Kind of pointless to uh, watch me bolt it in. Okay, that is all bolted in. Now I'm going to work on the um, the eyebrow molding. And the clips that they give you are junk. I'll show you. So the clips they give you, these slide into the metal here. But the problem is, is when you slide these in here, let's get it set up the right way. All right, so when you slide this in here, this one's not bad up here, but when you put it down here on the side and you need to put one yeah, they, they just don't fit right. So I'm going to use this style clip. I have some of them here. I have to find some nuts for them, but I have the first one positioned where it's got to go. And these fit like garbage. They don't fit real good at all. I mean, you can see behind them. But it is what it is. So I am going to, I need to put one right here. Kind of place that in there. Like that. Okay, so now we have the top two. I need to get one right here. I'm trying to get it as close as I can to where it's gotta go so it's not very hard to, then it's not as hard to move it around. Oh, I'm 
the wrong spot. Okay, that's those three. I could potentially put one right here, but this molding is bent so crappy that I'm not gonna put one right here. I'm just gonna run my screw down there. And that's gonna, by, by not putting one here and putting a screw here, it kind of lets it kind of work itself into place. So now I gotta find some nuts that'll go on there and uh, I'll get this one tightened down. I'm gonna have to do it from the back side. I'm gonna have to reach my hand in there and tighten up these nuts. So I'll do that off camera. I'll get this one on, I'll get the other side on and then we'll come back and I'll find this piece, hopefully I have it. And we can put that one on and then I gotta find the old hood pieces so we can put those on. So, all right, I'll be back shortly. Okay, I got that piece on. I bent it around and got it to fit pretty decent. Now, this grill here was all chipped up. So I took some, oh, wrong stuff. I took some Krylon matte black and I sprayed over all this, okay? So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some lacquer thinner on a towel and I'm gonna wipe all the fins off that are supposed to be silver. So I'm just gonna take it on my finger like this. I'm just gonna run right across here. Sometimes you gotta scrub it a little bit. And what this is gonna do is take an old piece of crap looking grill and make it look halfway decent for next to no money at all. So if you're just trying to get yourself a decent looking car to drive around in the summertime, there are plenty of ways that you can do things on the cheap and have yourself a pretty nice looking car. So basically, if you see here, I'm just scrubbing off the paint off the tops only. It takes some time. I mean, it's not super fast by any means. It's pretty dry. It's not completely dry, but it's plenty good enough. But if you take your time and you really go back and forth, you can get a pretty nice straight line. So I'm going to go ahead and do all these spins. And then I'm going to put on these beauty rings around the headlights and I'll come back and show you what it looks like. Okay, this side's together. I wiped off all the fins. Look at how much better that looks. Is it perfect? No. Does it look presentable? Hell yeah. So basically you have this over here. That's what this looks like now. I wiped down all the trim rings and everything. I actually wiped them down real good with lacquer thinner because there was a bunch of overspray and stuff on them. So I cleaned all that off. Um, I think I'm gonna spray this uh, emblem and then wipe all the tops off because the insides of all these letters are supposed to be black and somebody has either since painted over it or there is, it's just gone, the black paint. Um, so now look at this side. Look at the difference in here. See that? See how crappy that looks? And I'll give you the same distance apart look at this side. Look at the difference. I mean, this is just minor things that you can do that cost basically nothing to do. And it makes a huge impact on what it looks like when it's finished. I mean, if you stand back here and you look at this one, you can just kind of see it's all kind of faded out, washed out. Then you look on this side, it just looks new. You know, it's not, like I said, it's not perfect, but it's a hell of a lot better. So I'm gonna take this off and spray this next. Take off these two screws here. Okay. So I'm gonna take this emblem in the way of the camera, I know. I'm gonna see if I can't tilt the camera down here without it flipping directions on me. Okay, I'm just gonna take some black, the same black Krylon matte finish paint, and I am going to 
spray the whole entire emblem with this paint. Okay? Then we're gonna let this set. And then we'll come back and I'm gonna wipe it off. And then I'll show you what that looks like, how that looks pretty much gonna look brand new when it's done. So now I'm gonna go over to the other side. I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna spray paint the black, wipe off the fins. So basically I'm just gonna do the exact same thing I did to the driver's side, to the passenger side, come back, show you what that looks like, and then we'll get that emblem cleaned up. Okay, I'm waiting for that passenger side to dry. Um, I wanna wipe down the rest of this uh, emblem here. I wiped off part of it so you could see how it's wiping off. So basically I just have some more lacquer thinner on my rag and I'm just scrubbing the top surface only. And every so often you gotta move your finger around because the rag will rip. Oh, the uh, eyebrow moldings or whatever they call them on this car. Remember I said I was gonna have to reach around behind the fender to put the nuts on? I did not have to do that. There is room between the grill and the um, fender to get in there and put that on. Okay, let's put our screws back in here. Put it back on the grill and we shall see what it looks like. Should look quite a bit better than it did. Still won't be perfect, but it'll look a lot nicer than it did. Okay, take this off the tripod here, and you can see. That looks a lot better. So now I'm gonna go ahead and wipe the fins on this side, get that all put together. We'll come back. I'll see if I have this bottom molding. I don't know that I have it or not. And then uh, I gotta get the hood moldings. And then we can put the uh, front cowl on and then the door weather stripping. Okay, I just put that lower uh, molding on the grill off camera. Now I am going to put the hood latch assembly in, which, I'm going to grab a couple bolts for. Four of them. One of the nuts on this one are missing. But I think um, that actually, I don't know if there's a bracket that goes in there or not. If there is, it's missing. But what we will do is drop this in and start these nuts. So this bar goes down underneath the grill assembly and underneath this lower balance and it sticks out below the lower balance. Pretty sure there's a bracket that goes on this side here. I wonder if I have it somewhere. I'm gonna have to look. for sure there was the bracket in there. Yes, it is. There it is right there. It was floating around out in the shop by the 59. I don't know why 
than it was. Just got to figure out which way this goes in. It goes this way. for that bottom one. All right, go grab a nut for that bottom. I don't think I have one out here. No, I don't. Okay, I grabbed a nut and a washer. You know what, I think there's a lower brace missing. And that I know I don't have. That goes from the bottom of this over to the grill, or I'm sorry, to the core support. And that's what this bolts through. Let me just double check, but I'm about 99% confident that piece was missing. Okay, it's still attached to the bumper assembly. So I do not need to put this in here. Because once the bumper assembly goes in there, the bolt can go down and there is a threaded nut already on that bracket. Okay, so now that we have that on, we can go ahead and put our upper latch on. And to be honest with you, I think it goes this way. Okay, so now we can put the upper latch on. Should be the same bolts as everything else. All right. This doesn't have a ton of wiggle room for adjustment. It does have a little bit. I'm gonna kind of put it back where the original marks were at. And we can give it a try. See if it's gonna latch or not. Perfectly. Okay, I'm happy with that. All right, so now I'm going to clean up these uh, old moldings, which look like crap for the hood. It definitely needs a new emblem put on it, but we're not doing that. So I'm going to try to clean up all this crap. It's all dented up, pitted up from rocks and stuff over the years, but we can at least get it cleaned up and put on the car. That's something that somebody in the future could change if they want to. Okay, wasn't really much I could do with this molding. It's pretty much shot. <clears throat> I mean, I'm sure it could probably be sent out and polished and fixed, but not for this project. So now I gotta try to get this on the car. So basically, I'm gonna go ahead and get this bolted on, come back, and I think I'm just gonna go ahead and bolt this on off camera. And then we could do the uh, front cowl piece on camera. And then uh, so all it's left is a door and trunk weather stripping for today. Okay, I had made one mistake. I put this on before I put the hood molding on. So I had to take that back off so I can get those nuts on to hold the hood molding. So now that both of those moldings are put on, I have the windshield wiper cowl here and I'm going to get this set into place. I do not have the weather stripping that goes between the cowl and the hood. Okay, now this has got to go underneath that stainless, which can be a little bit of a pain in the butt. Thank you. 
close. One side in, passenger side's on. Driver side doesn't want to slide underneath here. There we go. Okay, let me go get some screws for this and I gotta finish getting that one corner in right there. Let me go grab some screws real quick. Okay, hopefully these are the right screws. Now me hitting on this edge like I did, I did not damage it at all. It was just, had to slide underneath that uh, stainless a little bit. Did not dent it up or anything like that. So now these are the screws I'm using. These are stainless steel screws with a bigger head so that it fits and doesn't go through the slotted area because these are slotted so you can slide it back and forth either which way that you need to. You want to try to always use Good quality stainless steel screws so that they don't rust. Because you'll buy some and they, you know, some cheaper stainless steel screws and they will rust. And you don't want that. Okay. All right, now that is done. I am going to shut the hood. Okay, we've got to get the windshield wipers out. We could stick those on. It needs a new windshield. There's a scratch in it right here from somebody uh, running the wipers with the blade fell off or something. I actually found the original weather stripping that goes on that cowl. It's still kind of pliable, so we'll just put it on. So now we got to stick these on. These are real easy to do. It's got this little clip right here. So basically you just want to put it where you want it. Lift up on it and just push it down. That's all, you, all there is to it. Now like the 59 and I believe the 60 Impalas, those both have a chrome beauty ring that goes around these holes and then the windshield wipers go on top of it. So it's a chrome beauty ring and a nut that tightens up, which really forces this down. And then you put your windshield wiper blade on. But not on 64. Okay, those are on. Let me open the hood back up. I'll throw on that uh, weather stripping. goes right along that back panel there. I'm going to give it a real quick wipe with some lacquer thinner just to clean it off. Because there's a bunch of just like years of grime on this. So basically I just took a little bit of paper towel and I'm just wiping it down. You can see the crap that's coming off of it. But like I said, it is still real pliable. So Got to remember which direction this goes on. Um, you know what? I have to take that cowl back out. Unless I can slide it on. Might be able to. Doubtful. Okay, I don't need to take it all the way off, but I need to take those screws out so I can slide that weather stripping in there. Okay, I loosen those screws up. They're kind of just floating around in the holes right there. Now we can see if we can possibly slide this down, or do I have to take more apart?
There we go. That cheap paint I used in that clear coat, that stuff is super strong stuff. It, um, I don't know that I'm putting that on right. Um, that's, it's really durable. It doesn't scratch very easy, which makes it hard to wet sand and buff. What am I doing wrong here? I thought it went that way. Do I have it upside down? No. Could have sworn that's how it went. It's gotta be how it goes. So running this weather stripping on the paint is definitely not leaving any marks in the clear. Okay, now we got that in there. Now, we have the front end all together, minus the muffler. And for being old, beat up moldings on some of this and grill and stuff, doesn't look too bad. All right, so now I'm gonna do the weather stripping on the doors. I'm just gonna show you one of them. Um, I'm not sure about the trunk lid yet. So let me get set up to do the door weather stripping and I'll be right back. Look what I just found in the trunk. Brand new hood piece. <laughs> so now I gotta take that apart and put the new one on. But you know what? I'm happy that they have it. It's gonna make the front end look a lot nicer. I'll do that off camera and then show you what it looks like afterwards because I think it's kind of dumb to go ahead and go over that again. And I do not have any trunk weather stripping. So I'm just gonna put the door on. I'm just gonna put one side on to show you guys. I'll do the other side off camera. I thought I had the trunk weather stripping. <laughs> But what it was is this other one is, this is the seal that goes between the bumper and the body on the rear of the car, where I had made a bunch of those patch panels. So we're not going to put that on right now. So I need to open this door. And on these 64s, you have holes drilled. And then there's plastic pegs in the weather stripping that has to go into those holes. And I'm not going to lie, sometimes it's pretty darn hard to push them into those holes. They don't always want to slide right in. I've actually, sometimes I have to take a drill bit and just go a tiny bit bigger on the hole. Or maybe even just the same size drill bit and just barely um, drill it out. Now I'm, what I'm doing now is making sure I have the right side because there is a difference between the two. And this says right spelled backwards. So this would be the passenger side. If you could see here, they actually spelled right. All the letters are backwards. So this goes on the passenger side. 
So this should say left. Yep, it says left, L-E-F-T. So this one's spelled right, that one's all backwards. Now, when I put these on, I'll take a little dab of glue and put it on this top edge here after I get it in place. But I wanna see how hard these holes are gonna be. Actually, that's not too bad. I got an old one stuck in there I need to push through. I, got, I just have a big flathead in here right now. See if I can just push the one edge through. Okay. But you can actually feel the clip inside the molding. It's like T-shaped. And uh, you get your thumb on it and you can push it into the hole. There we go. So I just have to do that all the way around. And then they give you plastic pegs that go in this top one here. So you gotta lift up on this and put the plastic one in. But like I said, I like the glue from here to the peg and that helps it from wanting to come out in the future because they do tend to want to pop out if you don't put some glue on them. I've never had a problem with the rest of the rubber coming loose on the door, just on the top edges on front and back. So I've just got to go along and just push them all in. All right, I'll go ahead and push the rest of these in. We'll come back, actually, yeah, we'll do that. Let me push the rest of those in, then we'll come back. We'll glue that front and back and put those on. Okay, so now when you put the weather stripping adhesive on, I always buy black, you can get it in black and yellow, but the problem with the yellow is, is if you miss, it kind of gets everywhere. I don't know why they don't make this stuff in clear. That would make life a lot easier, because then if you got it on the paint, it would be a lot less noticeable. But what you want to do is put it on your weather stripping and on the paint. You want to hit both surfaces with it. And you want to leave it loose for about five, 10 minutes and then stick them together. You're letting the, uh, the gases come out of the glue. And then it acts more like a contact cement. So I'm gonna let this set, come back, we'll put it on, put the plastic pegs in, and then uh, actually, let me put this door lock back in on this side while I'm waiting for the glue. Um, there's a rod, okay, I see the rod. There's a clip on it, you gotta, take off and put back on. Make sure that's the right rod that I'm messing with. Yes, it is. Okay, so basically this goes in the door and then you have this C clip here, this big, huge clip that slides in here and it grabs these two ears on the back side of the cylinder. And as this goes in, it tightens it, it pulls it in against the metal of the door. So we gotta slide it in here. We have to get our lock bar and this clip put back on around it. I'm actually going to have to take it loose from down below and put that the top clip on first and then put the bottom clip in. I'll show it to you once I get it out of here. 
should go grab my light because I really can't see what I'm doing in here. Yeah, this one came off backwards. I don't know why or how I got it off, to be honest with you. Unless it wasn't on, I don't remember. I'm going to slide this clip off all the way so that I can show it to you. It normally just stays on. Okay, so this bottom clip slides onto a piece of metal like this. And when it slides on, it latches onto a hole drill. And then what you do is you put your latch, this into your lock cylinder first, and then you push it through here. There is a little groove on this uh, rod that grabs a hold of those prongs on the back side of that clip and that's what holds it on. So I'm going to slide this clip back on. Okay, that's clipped on. Now before I put that rod in, I'm going to go ahead and put this uh, this in. Now this one on these, this year, go in from here, from the outside in. Um, so, so a lot of the cars, they go inside the door so you don't physically see it on the outside. But that's all you gotta do is just push it in like that. I'll probably take some black paint and a um, little paintbrush and paint that black because the blue obviously is not matching the new blue. So now we need to feed this through the lock cylinder first. Once this goes through the lock cylinder hole, the hole sits right here. We have to slide this clip like that and then push it around that rod. And what that does is keeps it from falling off of the lock cylinder. So I'm gonna get that in there first. I'm gonna go ahead and clip, get this clip on. Okay, ah, I have it, fell off. All right, got the clip on. I got it clipped around the rod. Now I just need to take it down to the other clip that I showed you, push it in. There we go. So now we have our lock cylinder hooked up. It, the clip is in, it's in place. Now this should be pretty set up. It's been a couple minutes. I'm not as concerned about letting this sit as I would be if I was gluing the whole door. If I was gluing the whole entire door all the way around, I would let it sit a little longer, but because we have all those plastic pegs holding it. I'm not too concerned about it. Now, these are the plastic pegs that they give you to put into that top hole. Um, sometimes these work, sometimes these don't. If these don't work, I've been known to use stainless steel screws and I'll put a stainless steel screw through there if these plastic clips do not want to go in. But let's see what happens here. Let me go grab a quarter inch extension and a hammer. And we're gonna see if we can lightly tap it into place. Actually, I'll just use the back side of this punch. Let's see if we can just tap it into the hole. Perfect. So that is in. That glue will dry and it'll give it a nice firm grip on Okay, I got that front molding on now. Looking a lot better. So that looks a ton better than what we had on there before. So, all right guys, well that's gonna end this video on the 64. Um, I'm gonna do the passenger door weather stripping and I'll probably do those emblems off camera because that's gonna take a bit of fussing around with to get those on. And then that's all that's left are door handles, trunk weather stripping, this rear tail pan weather stripping, bumpers, and put the interior door panels on, drop that lower back seat in, and that is it, guys. This one will be out of here, 59. So still waiting on parts for both of these. You know, I'm real, real close on both of these, but 
I'm running out of things to do on both of them. I just need a few more parts for each of these cars to be finished up. So hopefully, fingers crossed, another week or two, I can at least get one of these two out of here. Um, the 64 will probably leave before the um, 59 because I got to do a really good buffing on this still. And that's going to take some time. If I do any sort of buffing on the 64, it's going to be minimal. Um, I don't even know if I'm going to mess with it. I'm going to have him look at it and see what he thinks. Um, but other than that, that's going to end this video, guys. Kind of chopped up. Didn't show a ton of stuff that I was physically doing because it's just areas that's hard to work in. So if you guys are liking what you're seeing, please like, subscribe, share. Any questions or comments, feel free to ask. Other than that, I will see you guys later. Oh, and by the way, if anybody is interested in a shirt, I have an email address on my main description on my page. And um, I got to post a couple pictures on there so you guys can see what they look like. Um, I have medium to triple X. Um, I was going to ask $24.95, but our great world here um, likes to charge so much for everything. I shipped the shirt out today to California and they paid, I had to pay them $14 to ship the shirt. So I'm thinking it's going to be $29.95 for a shirt shipped in the U.S. Um, that really doesn't leave me much. I spent a lot of money on the shirts because I wanted a good quality shirt and they're screen printed and they're multicolored. And then I had my own label put on the back rather than having a tag that sticks out of the back. So I'm not really in it to make money, but if anybody's interested in buying a shirt, I have a ton of them. Um, feel free to ask, I have them in orange and blue. I will put a picture up tonight on those somewhere on my, on this uh, YouTube channel. I don't know where yet, I'll figure it out. So, all right guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you later.